Hello, welcome back. I'm sure you've all noticed that it is snowy out here today. I decided it was a lovely crisp winter's day and I'd come outside and do some outdoor filming for a change because it's lovely. We've got a nice little sprinkling of snow all over Edinburgh. It's a nice excuse for me to wear my cloak, my cloak pin and be all fancy and get weird looks as I go out. Now I'm sure you're all aware of the new film that's just come out, The Dig, on Netflix, which stars Carrie Mulligan and Lily James and Rafe Fiennes' accent, which is just glorious. And it reminded me of a paper that I read quite recently. Nature. It reminded me of a paper that I'd read quite recently by Neil Price, who you might have heard of. He's written quite a few popular books on the Viking Age. He's also an honorary professor at the University of Aberdeen, and it's also co-written by a man called Paul Mortimer, who is a very well-regarded and well-known Anglo-Saxon reenactor and material culture specialist. He's an independent archaeologist, basically. And this paper, and I've linked it in the description below, talks about the Sutton Who helmet and how there's a theory that this helmet and others and other artefacts might actually represent Odin, the god Odin. So if you're not familiar with Odin, Odin uh, was and is a Germanic god who is usually represented with one eye. He's also known as uh, Wotan, Woden, Grim, Grim, terrible pronunciation, and he's worshipped all over the Germanic world by a variety of cultures and becomes really popular sort of 400 to 1000 AD. It's kind of his big expansion. And this paper is really interesting because what it is arguing is that the Sutton Who Helmet, this fabulous beast here, is actually a mask of Odin. So when you put this helmet on, you're cosplaying Odin, role-playing Odin, which I thought was this wild idea, because that just seems completely crackers to me. However, reading the article and looking through the bibliography, there are loads of artefacts out there. There are figurines and helmets and other things that have this very distinctive way of displaying Odin. So let's dig into it for a minute. So the Sutton Who helmet, if you're not aware, is uh, an Anglo-Saxon helmet of, I think, the 6th century, mid-6th century, and it was discovered in the south of England uh, just before World War II, and it has this wonderful decoration of gold and garnet plates and cloisonne, which is basically little, little bits of garnet all put together to make the wonderful... I mean, they're here, the wonderful eyebrows. Look at the eyebrows, those eyebrows. It also has a zoomorphic ridge decoration here. So zoomorphic, it's in the shape of an animal with these garnet eyes. And we have other helmets like this. Some of the Vendel period helmets from Valsgerde uh, are similar in that they have eyebrows with garnets. <coughs> and garnet and gold is a really, really like, it is the Gucci of the Anglo-Saxon art world. Garnets and gold is what you have if you are a fancy boy. Like, look at all the garnets and gold from the Sutton Who burials. It's magnificent. However, if you look really, really closely, and Neil Price and Paul Mortimer looked this closely, you can actually figure out that one eyebrow, the right eyebrow, has little gold foils underneath the garnets so that they sparkle. Because if you don't have that, and you just put the garnets into the cloisonne on the ironwork, they'll not really reflect anything. They've just got iron behind them. They don't look very impressive. If you put a gold foil behind them, that reflects the natural light much better because gold doesn't tarnish and you get these lovely red sparkly garnets. On the left eyebrow, after lots of investigation, it seems like there were no gold foils in that eyebrow. So this eyebrow, this eye, is deliberately not illuminated like the right eye. Added to that, the little animal face here also has one garnet with a gold backing and one garnet without in the eyes. So it's deliberately one-eyed. We have this cyclops mask. 
The Valskerter helmets have this feature as well. We also have figurines like this one that seem to be fairly obviously Odin related with this one eye feature through the use of this really clever light work the, using the sunlight, using natural light to make it look like you've got one eye or one eyebrow at least. And there's a theory that this is related to masks. So one of the names of Odin is Grim, which means mask. In fact, Grim is still a word for mask in some Scandinavian languages. And Grimmer, mask wearer, is a pseudonym for Odin. We have this mask helmet that makes you look like Odin. Is this an Odin mask? Now we have other representations of masks. We have a felt mask that's rather fabulous, which kind of implies that wearing masks was part of the spiritual and religious rituals of the Anglo-Saxons and the Norse people. My hands are getting really cold. So it does look like wearing masks is part of a religious tradition that is now lost to us. It's now lost to history. We don't know how these masks were worn. We don't know what these rituals looked like. The Sutton Hoo helmet gives us more clues because it also has decorative panels showing what look like dancers. These people have been called weapon dancers for a long time. So is this some kind of masked dance ritual in honour of Odin or Wotan or Wotan or Woden, however you want to pronounce his name, it doesn't really matter. The war god, the mask wearer. I was really sceptical about this, but then after digging through this article and looking at all of these artefacts, it's, it seems really plausible. So this famous helmet that we've had in the British Museum for donkey's years, that people have poured over for decades and decades and decades, and just seen as a wealthy king's warrior helmet with a fun mask with a moustache on it. You guys know, if you're regular viewers, I don't like to stick my neck out and say I fully agree with this theory, but... I think I fully agree with this theory. I think that it's completely plausible that the Sutton Hoo helmet is more than just a helmet. It's more than just a display of conspicuous consumption of gold and iron and silver and garnets. I think it may also have a distinctly spiritual or religious aspect to it. I think that they're may well have been Germanic rituals involving putting on a mask, taking on the role of the gods, dancing, and possibly the ritual use of weapons within those dances as well. Anthropologically, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, there are traditions like that from all over the world, and much as I am very much of the opinion that you can't use modern cultures to completely understand ancient cultures, it fits an awful lot. Like, it fits... it fits really well. Like, all these pieces fit together too well for it to just all be coincidence. But yeah, there you go. I think it's, I think it's wonderful that we have this really underexplored aspect and really forgotten aspect of Germanic religion, this I mean, it, it asks so many questions did they do fire lit mask dances as religion and entertainment in their long halls and their mead halls, were they doing this before battle, was this weapon dancing some sort of pre-battle ritual because a lot of the things that we see this Odin representation with the eyebrow is related to warfare, the helmets, lots of helmets displaying this. It's really, really cool. It's really, really interesting. I think it's so exciting. And I really, really hope that we get some more information on this. I hope that we have more archaeologists and anthropologists working on this theory, because I would love to see some... Um, I mean, they'll have to be speculative, but I'd love to see some more writing on how these rituals work with the archaeology. I'd love to see how these helmets might have been used, how these seemingly totemic figures might have been used in these rituals. I think it's absolutely fascinating. Um, 
And I hope that you do too. And I hope that you've enjoyed this little video. It's a short one this week. It's not a 40 minute video essay on Hollywood Vikings. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this is a fun little introduction to this subject for you guys. And I really hope that you read up on it. I've linked to uh, a couple of interesting articles in the description because this is a fascinating, fascinating subject. And it's one that I was last week years old when I discovered it. I had no idea that this was a theory. I had no idea that Neil and Paul had written this article and it's in the European Journal of Archaeology so I should have picked up on it because it's one of the journals that I like to read as I'm you know sat drinking mead wrapped in a cloak listening to heavy metal music and you know as you do. I have some exciting news for the channel which is I am very close to getting 10,000 subscribers so thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel it's amazing I wake up every morning and Sometimes there are 20 new people, sometimes there are 50 new people, which is just... It's just heartbreakingly touching. So thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel. It really does mean a great deal. Uh, I have officially, thanks to my generous coffee donors and um, some of the ad revenue, officially now made enough money that I can afford a P.O. box this year. So a few of you guys have asked if I'm ever going to set up a post office box. If you check my video's descriptions in the near future, you'll see that magically a P.O. box address has appeared. Please don't send me poop in the mail. Um, I'm pretty sure it won't get past customs, but, you know. Uh, and don't send me drugs. Uh, I'm a good boy. But I'm going to carry on my little walk. The sun's come out. I've got my cloak wrapped around me, I've got my lovely penannula brooch, uh, and I, yes, I will at some point do a video on how to wear a cloak, um, but the short answer is, however keeps you warm, my friends. So stay warm, stay safe. Uh, for anybody who is worried that I'm not masked up, it's right here, uh, I'm in a, a very quiet, isolated part of the world, so thank you so much for joining me. Diolch yn fawr unwaith eto am ymuno at Tantronissa Till the next time. Bye for now. Oh. Right. Get this camera out of the tree without trashing it. Uh. Whoop. Come on.